Hey, welcome back. Welcome man. back, man. Good really to good to see you again. Yeah, Burn yeah, my hand quickly yeah, great, and great, we'll man. we'll get into it. Yeah. We're in. Yeah, we're in. We're in. Good How to see was, you again. Uh, yeah, great to see you. You too. competed at uh ADCC, ADCC No, the main thing, right? Which one? Just now, ADCC twenty twenty three. Well, yeah, I did. Yeah, you did very well. So I hear I won. Well done, man. You and Freddie, Freddie Daddy Stress, Daddy Freddie Stress, both won the, the check 88 out Freddie Daddy division. Stress. If you want to improve every aspect of your life on Instagram, he, yeah, who has it covered? Nike, E, uh, <laughs> shoes, yeah, the whole the works, guys. Remember, like and subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, get on that now. That would be so good. Also, big shout out to our first sponsor, No Faff Marketing. Oh, yeah. Well Get done. Woo. Yep. Woo. So, No Faff Marketing, they help with gyms. I think any kind of gyms or, or business that wants to improve their... I don't think you have to do weights in your gym for it, in your business, yeah. for it to be accepted into the No Faff Marketing community. No, jiu-jitsu. Just help lots of fellas improve like, their jiu-jitsu gyms. Yeah. I mean, and obviously, I'm too. biased because... We already used the service, but I mean, the numbers look good. I don't know what the fuck they mean, but we're getting a lot of like <laughs> random people walk into our gym. So great. Yeah. And that must be good. That's good inquiries. Yeah. And same with James Cooper. Shout out James Cooper. Shout out Grassfed Beef. Shout out Grassfed Butter Fucking and beef. love that. Fucking love Grassfed Beef. Yeah. Guys, check Sometimes. out No Faff Marketing. If you run a business and you want to improve your businesses, traffic, SEOs. Are we going to do the song and dance? What's that? Just the, we prepared that, you know. Oh, no, no, no. no. no we'll do, okay, that'll be in another episode. We'll, we'll do, do a little time. dance. No for, faff uh, marketing. No yeah. faff marketing. On it. Right. I, I forgot my questions. Hula Let's shorts. Go. Let's go. Let's fucking Hold go. On. You went to London Grapple today. You had a great time from 8.20 in the morning and you just got back now. That's great. And it's 3.20 p.m. How was training there? You trained with G and Carlo? Yeah, we were taking it easy because obviously my knee is fucked and he was very aware of that. And... Uh, I think he's pretty tired. He Got probably did the gauntlet of everyone who wanted to roll with him and then and then some. And I think he's also been teaching seminars and whatnot. So yeah, yeah we're just taking it very easy. It was, it was good rolls though. I enjoyed it. He's very, you know, sticky on the on the bottom with his with his hands and that. And then yeah. from top, just like aware of all the legs. It was good good fun. Uh and yeah, not taking it too seriously. You know, just give it give a little take a bit little, of fun. Yeah, good bit lad. He is a nice lad, yeah, fair play. There enjoyed it. He's telling us about tim kennedy's escapade someone tried to someone tried to break into his house and apparently he, he went all splinter cell on him with the night vision goggles <laughs> and fucking <Splinter> cell. <laughs> <laughs> fucked wow. him up why you fucked him up well something like that yeah i don't know how legal it is so we'll just leave it at that basically he went splinter cell shout out tim kennedy he's a fucking yeah. he's he would be the last person's place i would want to go near in the dark at any time to break in. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what we were saying. Like, what is the, what are the chances? But I guess if everyone's packing in America and you just go walking into kitchens, like sooner or later, you're you, gonna get shot. You're gonna get the red dot sighted on you, and you're just gonna be like, ah, oh, shit. Splinter some. Shit. So yeah, LG was good. It was good fun. Maybe a bit cramped, but I had a good time anyway. I enjoyed seeing all the, all the old lot. A lot of uh, yeah, a lot of improvements. New faces, old faces. A lot of new faces. Yep. Did you get any questions or? I got heaps of questions. You got heaps, yeah. All right. You want to do one oh, for one? King I'll pick heaps. a sick oh, question. Heaps, but enough. Then you pick a sick question. Yeah, you go. All right. Keep getting caught in outside Ashy Achilles lock. Help me. Try not to fall to your butt cheek. Ever. In fact, watch Joseph Chen versus Shashinsky. I think he did a good job of negating the, uh, the straight foot lock finish from the butterfly Ashy. So that's probably a better study than just a quick answer here. Uh, and you'll be able to actually see what he does and copy it. You know, I'll watch that again just to learn a little bit. So I recommend you do that. Get ahead of the... Get ahead of the curve. Get ahead of the game. Fuck the game. You? There it is. Yeah. I'll do that. You probably I'll, listen to that advice. I'd listen to that advice. Yeah, my I'd, advice I, is I would take that on board and then I would do that. Yeah. And yeah, just standing up, you know, straight foot lock. Don't let them go belly down. Make yourself go belly... Make them go belly up, literally. Make them go belly up. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is a silly question. We'll ask it anyway. Christian Osvek versus Royal Professor in a battle of wits. Who comes out on top? Royal Professor, probably. An unarmed. An unarmed battle, unarmed of, wits. battle of wits. Yeah. yeah. Royal Professor. Yeah. But, I mean, no, are actually, we talking Christian at four years old when he was in Mensa? 
Yeah. Or we're talking him now. Christian Osbeck. Christian Osbeck's probably more witty than Real Professor. Real Professor. I don't think that guy's. I don't think he's very witty. He's not witty. He's just loud. But he's not loud. He's got. He's anonymous. Yeah. So he's extremely quiet. Next question. That was a good one, though. That was such a good question. Let's hope they're all similar to that. Let's make the real on that. Yeah. Let's. uh, Damn. People are going to love this. Tune in, guys. This is a good podcast. I think this is a bad time to say like and subscribe. Go on. Oh, oh fuck! I just got up to someone just sending me money. Eh? Cunt. That's right. Back fatiguing when supersetting dead squats with abs. Go lighter or swap out exercises around. Don't do the superset with abs then. That's it. If your back is fatiguing when you're doing a lot of ab work, superset with deads or squats. Maybe you need to look at your technique, or just do a different exercise, something less taxing on the abs. Back is fatiguing on the yeah squats. That's a bit weird, surely. No, back squats are pretty fatigued, can be pretty fatiguing on the lower back. Try a different squat variation. On the lower back, yeah. Yeah, you could yeah. do a front squat, you could do a zercher squat, you could do a belt squat, you could do a leg press. For the deads, you could change your deadlifting technique up. You could, you know, at, like have a look at your technique, maybe use some grips, or just change the ab exercise up. You could look for something that's not going to be as demanding on the front abs. Maybe look for a bit of rotation. Remember, yeah. lo- lo- like you could just do like a mobility exercise too. Like a supine rotation, a side plank rotation, or a side plank bend. It's not like yeah. super taxing, but it hits two birds with one stone. It does get the core working and mobility as well. I mean, I found that abs help with the back. I find that too. Yeah. Fires the core up. So why are you talking shit? Well, there's many facets. Many. No, there's not. M- facets the right word. Many. There is, f- yeah, yeah. Facets well at, at play. Thanks. Um, Good, man. Look at this technique. Yeah. Technique. Maybe change the ver- change the exercise, yeah. or change the variation of the squat that you do, because you shouldn't be frying your back on a back squat. If the, if you just go if you do yeah. back squats, I'm like, man, this is killing my lower back. Don't do them. Do something else. I feel like just holding the weight there for that amount of time. If that kills your back, it's probably too heavy or something. Or you're yes. just you're just extremely uneven in your strength. Yeah, in Are you the- can't, like there's something going on with your squat mechanic, and some people just can't put a bar on their back, and that's fine. Just put the bar in front. Do a vertical squat, do a front squat, or just, just do a back squat. Whatever is not flexible enough. Shoulders. Sometimes, like it's just the axle loading. If you have a bar on your back, or whenever you hold something really heavy, it compresses the spine. The spine does a really good job compressing. Yeah. And for some people, that compression, some people are more compressed than others. So this may be a problem. Why? What could make you more compressed? Extra gravity. J- being fat. Being fatty, is that what you're saying? Being you a fat fuck, being yeah. Being a fat cunt. Yeah, why don't you lose weight, you fat piece of shit? Little and fatty. Then, and then being, again. being a little fatty, genetics, maybe you're a bit stiffer, a bit tighter. Stiff, yeah. Yeah, stiffness. The one he fee. Um, maybe you had an injury. And this overall strength of the infrastructure, is your core actually strong enough? Maybe mm. you, you actually don't have a strong enough core. Or maybe just try and do, like, actually... In, ingrain the squat pattern do some five second eccentrics do some two second pauses at the bottom make sure you're solid in that every yeah. movement of the squat i get it though it could be after jiu-jitsu training i'll get the most fatigue in the back i'd say for sure yeah and then going to deadlifts after a jiu-jitsu session sometimes you never feel like you can quite quite get that the clamp and go yeah so on those yeah. days we don't go heavier and i suggest you do the same if you exactly. don't if you don't feel excellent that day and you're like man this is beating up my back swap the exercise or go light. You got a new collie here? No. On that side, it looks like a bit. No? Same, same. All Thanks right. for noticing. No worries. Yeah, just. I was starting to get. Anyway, I was wondering why I was getting a semi, but it's, it's all. Oh, it all makes yeah. sense now. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've got to pick good ones here because some of them are a bit. How oh, do you yeah. deal with muscle fatigue during rolling? Probably at that stage, you are getting beaten my friend it sounds like you are being less efficient than your opponent uh, if you're rolling for let's say two hours obviously i would you know you got to eat carbs before and hydrate well yeah maybe some what are they call you put the little sleep be sleep eight hey. sleep sleep is good midway through uh <laughs> but yeah muscle fatigue during rolling if you do weights, definitely it helps because you get more goes. We've done that before. But if you are just getting fatigued against everyone, you're probably not being very efficient. Or like maybe you're doing a good job stalling out positions. Like if you're in mount, you're just someone's walking your arm up. And each time you do a big bridge and pull your arm back down, yeah, you're surviving the round, but you're using all your energy 
it's not the most efficient way of going about stuff, even though it may be the most effective. And that is my answer to that. Brilliant. Fantastic. Let's cut to an ad break. Let's talk about no faff mo- nah, we'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Maybe we'll, we'll do that we'll another time. Back, eh? We'll come back at the end. Don't want to <laughs> ram it down your throats too hard. Although it was good. Should you do the exercise? Should you do the same exercises or is training the same muscle twice a week? Fine. Uh, am I right? Isn't that the same thing? Yeah. Should you do the same exercises or is training the same muscle group a week? Twice a week? Fine. Twice Man, a week is fine. Next question. That is a tough <laughs> question to answer. <laughs> Proper brain twister. All right. Uh, swimming up. for jujitsu. Oh, wow. With random resistance accessories, e.g. fins and paddles. What do you think, mate? Honestly, if you're looking at doing jujitsu, I would aim to do as much jujitsu as possible. And some weights on the side. Swimming may be good for like breathing nasal it's not even nasal though it's just normal breathing but it'll make your diaphragm stronger yeah shout out surfing yeah. surfing is great fun surfing, Surf, yeah. surfing and jiu-jitsu that, you would say that though, wouldn't you yeah fucking you, shout out surfing you australia would, you would actually enjoy it obviously if, i've, if I've you, been windsurfing before yeah yeah what, windsurfing Morocco? where you hold the pa- yeah, yeah yeah when i went to uh, gibraltar you're holding the actually, this is actually made up but I have been windsurfing before. <laughs> you know, where it's, you hold the thing and you've got to switch it around. Yeah, yeah. You, you stood up on it. That's much better. I mean, I say it's better as in I haven't tried the other one. That's what I mean. But it was decent. You'll enjoy surfing. In Brittany. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no doubt. I've got balance. You, you'll enjoy it. Balance in life. All right, cool. Sw- anyway. If you, swimming and jiu-jitsu, it could be fine. There yeah. That, that's a good answer. It I've, could be good. I feel like swimming makes me too tired to continue do jiu-jitsu afterwards i feel very weak after i've done a swim you know i'll do a swim i get feel more, very better technique at swimming you know yeah but like what are we trying to be good at here jiu-jitsu exactly i'm not trying to be a fish or whatever right your opinion on getting grip standing then pulling versus just pulling contact first pull guard first yeah i mean contact first is obviously a bit better but it it seems a bit cheap you know for some reason grab and pull guard yeah like like grabbing and pulling through it is obviously effective but it just seems like if you're gonna do it in training like you're wrestling with someone then they suddenly like pull guard to the legs there's nothing really wrong with it but if it's agreed that you're doing wrestling and you're trying to see who's gonna get the first takedown for you to just pull into a leg lock really fast <laughs> is kind of a cunt move however what it's about obviously competition? Obviously, completely fine. Yeah, if it's competition or something like that, you're just trying to when just trying to break as much as possible, as fast as possible. So <laughs> get the grips. Right? So yeah, just go for it. Yeah, like slide in, get your grips all in one go, and get your finish as soon as possible. But if you're training, try res- try some wrestling. Yeah, either do some wrestling, or you can make it clear that you're gonna you know jump scissors or whatever it is you like to do, like slide <laughs> slide in with an arm drag to get the legs. Jump you know. scissors. I yeah. love jump scissors. Yeah. You do like that. Yeah, just normal well. scissoring is good too. It's good enough, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> good play. enough. Love that. Uh, thoughts on bath bombs? <laughs> Those are good. <laughs> Those are fucking good. Do you ever you ever take baths these, these days? Uh, I don't have a bath. You don't have a bath? No. Nah. Fucking hell. I know. Poor you. Thanks for rubbing it in. Yeah. That's all right. You got a bath? You can use my bath if you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll for real, bath. though, you can. If you want to come after training one time, do you want to turn it off for a bit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a lush, get a bath bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on supplementing magnesium? I take magnesium before I go to bed every night. I feel like it helps me sleep very sleep. well. Do you think it's worth taking during training for the cramps in them, man? Uh, those, little, blah, 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 those little electrolytes have some magnesium in them, I think. Which ones? The high fives. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. so. Nice. Um, I'm on the SIS ones at the moment because the high five has too much uh, caffeine in it. Can't be banging them. You got the caffeinated ones. Yeah, I have the decaffeinated ones, but I I finished them. I only got got one precious packet left and I'm saving it for a special occasion. (laughs) (laughs) Precious packet. One precious packet. Um, It could be good during training. I I take it before I go to bed. Helps me sleep. Yeah, actually, it does feel when you're after a training session late at night, you just keep drinking water, but you're still dehydrated. Magnesium. Bang that. Bang, bang that, that farm. Okay, bang that. Bang that farm. Trust me, trust me. Has Owen approached, how has Owen approached his development over the years? Best tips on improving at a quicker rate. 
talking about jujitsu, yeah. Uh, finances, personal <laughs> finances. <laughs> ah, well, it's actually quite closely linked now that you mention it. So oh. how I have improved my personal finances is I've been thinking when I'm training, what basically self-assessment, right? You've got to assess oh. yourself. What am I best at? What am I shittest at? And if you are shit at something and you want to practice it, I would say to pick your rounds to suit what you are practicing so you can get that breakthrough, you know, detail, technique, understanding of the move, and then you move on to the next one. But critical self-assessment over time. You can't just go in and scrap. If you go in and scrap, you are doomed to be shit forever. Mm. And over the last years, yeah, just like do what entertains you. If you need help, buy an instructional. My instructional. So say like when you say choose your training partners carefully so you can go and hit the move that you're yeah, trying to yeah, practice you got, on. You got to go, hmm, this guy's sweet for the move and I really want to hit this move. So I'm going to pick this guy and I'm going to see how many times I can get it or see if I can get it to work on him. And then once you get it to work on them, you have like a, a, a feel for when it's going to work, when it's not going to work. Then you can start to try out on more and more advanced, th- yeah, advanced training partners. So mm-hmm. even if you do have the perfect scenario, it might still be... You might still encounter strong resistance because just because they're strong or just because they wreck fast or all this kind of shit. So, yeah, that would be my idea. You want to just do what you enjoy, first of all, so you don't get bored and then practice it on people that you will actually be able to hit it on. And if you if there's no one or it's like a really complicated set of moves, just get someone who's much weaker and smaller than you and then just force them into that position through jiu-jitsu <laughs> and uh, then yeah. apply your moves to them. Mm. Yeah. Fair play. That's a great answer. Thanks, man. Go on. Give me another. Shall I go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. One for one, yeah. tic tac yeah. Uh Let's move on a bit from the bath bombs and that. That was, yeah. Move on from that. Podcast merch. That's a quick one. We need that. I'll look into it. It's that. coming. We're going to get like... I'll, I'll look into that. I don't know, yeah. like, like mugs or something or, or maybe a candle... You know, those, you know, those are fucking poisonous, right? Those would give you AIDS. I saw an Instagram post. They give you AIDS if you're not careful. They've got we'll, get, s- we'll get a t-shirt with us holding our hand at the candle like this. And that would be good, actually. And we say sick underneath. We could do one where like, I, I have like three eyes and then there's like a snake in the background. Orange. In a circle, and yeah. And it's yeah. got sort of like Aztec style. It would be pretty original. Yep. Uh, sorry, these questions are too long for me oh, to okay. read. Just, just ram them off. Ram them off. All right. Thoughts on the groin heel hook rotating ankle lock counter when you, someone has you in ashy? You get this, bro. I think I know the one you're talking about where you, you know, grab their heel and just like basically butt scoot your ass into their toe. I think it's good if people are slow to react. Like if they've never seen it before, you're going to get them. But against a more dangerous leg locker, I wouldn't spend too long trying to just rip that toe out because they might extend it behind your knee and then your hands are here not pushing that foot off the hip where hopefully they would be but bear in mind if you get the double grip on it you manage to get double grip on it then uh yeah then uh it's probably gonna hurt them pretty badly like if you do manage to do it so it's a good hail mary i like it and you can if you like if someone doesn't know you're gonna do it it can be pretty effective but if someone's pretty disciplined with their legs you just won't get a chance to do it and that is my answer. You want the foot in the middle, not behind one of your knees. And I believe most of the time the foot is going to be behind one of your knees if they're a uh, well-seasoned opponent. Watch out for the discipline opponents. Fuck sure. them. Uh, more helpful for BJJ, yoga or gym? If someone could do only one for BJJ, which one is better? Obviously, going to the gym. You should start a website called Gym for BJJ instead of Yoga, yoga for, for BJJ. BJJ. And yeah. you definitely, although... Yeah, that's so good. Most people think gym is cheating. Cheating? Yeah, it's like it's like the last thing that you can say, ah, oh, well, he's just stronger than me. <laughs> you know, but yoga... I was people... actually watching two fellas uh, in the gym roll today. I'm like... and at, at Hodges. Yeah, and they're both like... One fellow is like young 20s, the other fellow is young 20s. I was gone. Man, if you fellas were just way stronger, you'd be so much better but they're really weak and sometimes I feel that it's like mate if you just were really strong and you could actually yeah. impose the moves that you want to do on people yeah 
you'd be good. And everyone can get really strong, by the way. And people are like, oh, but fuck you, man. You know, being yeah. strong, you, you can get strong. If you if you go to a gym and lift mm. properly and, you know, to be share. Fair, yeah. When I started, we would literally just go in a, like a circle jerk, minus the jerk. And we just go like 10 push-ups. Next person does 10, 10, 10. And then do the same with sit-ups. And it'd just be like, like a fitness course before as a warm up, yeah, with like shitload of push ups and just sit ups. That, and if you've done nothing, that will get you strong. And yeah, legit, legit, that's pretty. Like I could do like fifty push ups just from doing that at the start of the class, just fifty straight. Push- also, I was very light, but yeah. you know, still like that's fucking necessary. Or if you can't do enough sit ups, like the most necessary one is like knees to chest or bringing your chest to your knees from close guard, for example. Like if you can't pull your body weight up from close guard. You are not an effective grappler, my friend. You are no. a fat piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> or you're just but, weak. But even if you can do those things and it's like, okay, let's say you can do like 25 push-ups, 30 push-ups in a row. Great. But you actually go to the gym, putting on some muscle, learning how to deadlift, learning how to squat, learning how to like eat yeah. properly and like putting on some muscle mass. And even if you want to stay in a weight class, still like maximizing your strength for that weight class. Yeah. You should do that because then you can be stronger and impose yeah. your will on people. As a decision-making process, if you're training seven times a week and you're not doing any gym and you're a skinny guy, you should cut one of those out and do the gym if you must cut one out. Otherwise, just add the gym on top. But 100%, you'll benefit more. Marginal benefits are decreasing as you increase the training load. So you're better off switching one of those jujitsus out for gym. So clever. Fuck, man. So clever. You hear the word marginal. Shout out economics degree. Shout, shout out, out, shout out Cardiff stress. University. Freddy must be like forty fifth in the country for uh, <laughs> for economics, stress. which is quite impressive. Just below Cardiff Met. Uh, what front headlock says Owen like? I see. I think I've mostly seen him breaking limbs. Holy. Front headlock. Wee, my guy. Did you add that last bit in, or was that part of the question? That was part of the question. Good man. Uh, what front headlocks do I like? I like the high elbow guillotine. I like the that one. Yeah, the short arm Das Silview special, aka ah oh, fuck, I don't even know what the name is. Uh, it's like a Das, but you connect your hands instead of going to the elbow deep grip, and you can connect it with Japanese neckties and that sort of stuff. But honestly, one thing I don't like about the front headlocks is practicing it over time takes a lot out of your grip strength, and I feel like I would rather squeeze with my legs for a sustained period of time, i.e., doing triangles rather than doing arm triangles. If I was to pick a front headlock mm. or an arm triangle, it would just be an arm triangle from mount. There you go. But when they're facing towards you, they start hand fighting. It's just all exhausting and, and get sticky. I like most of the time people hand fight. Tactically, it's better to just spin to the back, get the back take and work from there where your legs are squeezing and your hands are kind of more what's it called aerobically working rather than just squeezing the whole time and trying to finish so yeah that's me but if you are good at it it's a very cheap way of finishing people and like you know if you've got scrappy passing you keep forcing people to front headlock if you've actually got dangerous front headlock attacks and you've put in the work where you've got enough what's it called endurance in your hands then it's great but building that endurance takes a lot of time and it's all well and good subbing one person one day but having to do it like 20 times every single day, two, Exhausting. three sessions a day. Yeah, good luck to you, my friend. I'd rather do that with my legs. Fair play. Thanks, man. Fair play. I blame. do play fair. But I also work fair. <laughs> you go. Next Me, question. Yeah? All right. Yeah, Fucking yeah. Fucking come on in. Next question. Best crackhead story? No, we've had that. Uh, probably me being punched in the face was my favorite. That was the old time. That was so good. That was so funny. And that was great. Are you doing that on purpose? To try and lure you in. To- <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just give me hate. How the fuck does Sylvie do the body triangle from hell? Sylvie's got very strong legs. He's got strong he legs. He squeezes his legs together whilst your body is within it. And yeah, fuck it. It gets, it gets a lot of people. It, 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 it yeah. gets it gets pretty it does get people pretty tight pretty quickly uh working in a gym lots of bending over to clean up best exercises to have lower back stiffness pick up the things properly i've been working in a gym for a long time 
pick up the weights properly. Yeah, get your it's clients a bit to help long. you. It they're, is very they're, long. They're a bit cumbersome getting your fingertips underneath it, but you got to pick them up properly. Yeah. I, I, when I wake up, I have a very boring routine. I, I wake up and I do my core exercises, dead bugs, bird dogs, side plank rotation, reverse crunch, three sets of 15 of every exercise for three sets. And that sets me up for the day. For your lower back. For my lower back. And lifting weights in the gym, you're very particular of how you lift them and such. Very particular. If it's a plate, it rolls. If it's a plate, I roll it across the room. Yeah. If it's on a bar, I try and do it very quickly. I lean over it and I pull it hard with my arms and like I, that. Psh, I just go very fast. Someone should come up with a better system for that, no? Yeah, you put you put the little plate underneath and you yeah, roll it Yeah, but even that's not good because you still got to do the lifting. There's, a, there's a thing you can get, but that, that's very that's very big. The way, like a car jack where yeah, you push yeah, it. Yeah, see, that's all Look, long, fam. If you're a PT and, you, and, this, and this is happening to you, you just need to get your clients to help you. Honestly, I've, I've had times where I can barely walk because I've fucked my back doing something. I'm like, hey, mate, for this session, like, a little back, if you help me. Yeah, and they go, gone. all right, but if you do that over and over, then you won't have any clients because they won't want to do that. But <laughs> put these weights away, would you? These, yeah. these, go get that. Come on. Go get, just be careful how you pick stuff up. Next question. Yeah, just yeah, stop being a turd. All right. What happened to the knee? Been training six months and so my ears are getting fucked. Can people have soft ears? You can just be soft. Uh, shout out you giving me a shout out on my cauliflower on your hair yeah you can have soft ears but i find that they actually collie less it's when you have cartilage in it the cartilage like gets rammed or whatever and it pops then you're gonna have a big collie i think when you've got really soft ears it just sort of like just flaps about doesn't it, it doesn't some people so don't don't have cauliflower ears and they're very good at jiu-jitsu and you're like who what how'd you race he doesn't really have cauliflower. Does he not? Not really. Like hardly any. A little. I a mean, little. if you deal with it well, you can get it to the point that it's all hard and it still looks like a normal ear. Right? If you did, if you did it well at the time and you managed to drain it and it your ears look great. You you Thanks, you've bro. done you have done a great job. You know, looking after them and making sure they don't <laughs> cauliflower. This one, I put I put magnets in it. <laughs> When it was going, I was like, yeah, I saw this thing called Collie Cure, except it's 270 quid and I'm fucking broke. So I just got little magnets and yeah. I just stacked them on my ear. I look like I live in fucking Camden. I look like a twat. Anyway. I can tell. It's good, yeah. Instead of like, instead of the whole ear staying together, the magnet just stayed there and the Collie grew <laughs> around the magnet. <laughs> so now it looks like I've got a fucking cleft on my ear. <laughs> but apparently you can get surgery for that, eh? Yeah, that'll be well worth it. That you and Sylvia have... Sylvia has the kept, worst kept, ears. Kept though. good care of their ears. <laughs> Sylvia has the worst ears. Sylvia is like a balloon. <laughs> yeah, it is like a his, balloon. Uh, yeah. Like a helium balloon. Yeah, that's from... Uh, ooh, Roadman. We're in a bit of Roadman activity. Yo. Uh, yo. Someone's going someone's to get that ZK Some, out, bro. Someone's line bike is about to be stolen. <laughs> <laughs> about to hear that clicking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, no, Sylvie's ears are fucking, yeah. Ears I'm sure he hears very well, but it's fucking annoying when your ears start to block as well. Mate, you're swerving all over the place. You get, you get, you get. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you think about doing speed drills for warm-ups? Hmm. Waste of time? Yeah, and nay. Like, like, as a warm-up. Like the... Not, that's not too bad. It's doing like, doing this, doing the fast uh, Torianders. That's like a that's like a cardio exercise and maybe a footwork drill, but you have to be precise with the footwork. Mm. And yeah, like, and also I wouldn't do it robotically. I think it's quite hard to do it in a play sort of way because a speed drill like that, like if you just do it repetitively, then you find like an, a shit and efficient way of doing it, which isn't actually relatable to the jujitsu but if you let's say you you do a pass fully technically perfectly and you just do it really fast then that would be basically like really hard sparring and i think that would be a good warm-up drill but that's not a drill that most people could effectively do i would say like i think that would take a lot of practice for the masses it's like the 10th planet warm-ups i think they're fucking shit well they right do. They, they'll do like it'll be like for example, I go Toriando, you replace, I duck under, and all this is like white belt warm-ups. I duck under, you turn to face me, I do a forward roll truck to the back, 
and then I go to an arm bar, you escape the arm bar, and then the drill resets with the other person on top. Right. And it'd be like seven, eight moves strung together, but obviously in a way that will never happen with no detail and no context and no like... And shitty movement mechanics. And, yeah, and just no like realistic expectation of what your partner is going to do. It's just like, and then they do this, which neatly fits into this. And just mm. by making these pathways where you're not considering the options between, you are becoming worse. And you're thinking in more of like a, like I'm just going to do my move regardless what they do sort of mode, which is shit. Yeah. So speed drills like that, good, but they have to be done mindfully again. If Like I can't think of any speed drills that I would do that I honestly think will make my speed so much speedier, faster, so much more so than that it'll actually be worth my time. Like, no, I'd rather just, you know, you go sparring and you actually see what happening in the sparring and you're like, hmm, can we do this position again? And I'll actually do it. And then, you know, you actually see how someone reacts and so on and what you should probably be doing. But yeah, the speed drills, it looks like a sort of get out of jail free card for having to do any mental work. There is no get out of jail free card for that, is there, fellas? You just can't get out of jail free at all. No. Shout out that guy that got out of jail from London, though. Uh, he escaped. <laughs> oh, the terrorist fella. He escaped quite near here, actually. He ended up in Chiswick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's apparently charged on terror offenses, but I don't believe he's actually a terrorist. Ogan, if, if you watch Flow on a browser, you need to turn off hardware acceleration. Why thing. has this been sent so in two weeks lagging. in a row? Yeah. This isn't fucking the IT crowd, cunt. Question for the question for the podcast. Is high trouble is high tripod passing something you have worked on or planning on doing? Yeah. What are some important aspects to make it work, especially with regards to entering the position and being able to, being stable in the position? Stability comes from the head position. Would you say Joseph Chen on the weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine that's why he's asking is because of Joseph Chen. Yeah. But he's asking about entering the position. So think about this today as a, as a mount. I'm pretty sure they're using in mount. Oh, no, he said high tripod, different story. Yes. yes. Disregard. Fucking hell, all right. Well. No, maybe I was in half guard. Anyway, go on. That'll do. Okay, yeah. So basically, he's talking specifically about entering the position. If you watch how he does it, it's a camping. He does like a camping spot. Like, for example, the sprawl passing, for example, the J point, or he does like a shin staple where he's going to push your shin to your butt with his cross leg and... Uh, cross leg and uh yeah and then from there he'll keep pressuring you until you extend limbs and then he'll look for the underhooks for example and the head position off that i think main thing that people probably do well to focus on when they're sparring to make their underhooks more effective and you know just keep their chest to chest position better is a head position that is severely lacking with a lot of people that are just uncomfortable like putting their face really near someone else's face <laughs> i get it though because when yeah. i first started i was like no, I'm not doing that. That's gay. Straight up, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to put my face next to a man's face, right? But then I had no problem doing double unders with my chin right on the guy's asshole. So, yeah. you know, swings and roundabouts, you know, some things are worth it, some things aren't. Yeah. Double I kissed you on the cheek the other day, didn't I? I pretended to. You did. I actually did, though, after the session. You did. After the session. <laughs> after the session. After the session. Tried my mouth guard. The other cheeks. Preferred thing to do when opponent... Opponent counters false reap by straightening the leg to avoid the saddle. Can't get leg around the triangle. Do you want to hear that again? Attack the other leg. If they straighten their leg, you've already fucked up the false reap. False reap, you sh they shouldn't be able to straighten their leg. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have the leg, the false reap leg through. That should be your bad, arms bro. And your arms are locked in a, you know, a figure four. This isn't a figure four. This is a, That's a rear, naked. rear naked choke grip. Right, so they shouldn't be able to straighten their knee. If they can straighten their knee, right, it means you didn't get the grip right or you didn't get your foot to the inside. If you can't get your foot to the inside because they're circling away, I would then go for a normal, you know, back step from bottom where you scoot your hips out and then bring your knee back in. Maybe we can do that as a technique tip next next time. We have we've been offering a technique tips, we but we will be back. Trust me, the tips. next technique tip is going to be nuts. It's going to be that we have mats up there. We could do them in here. Fucking we could, hell. We could, we, could get, we could literally do it now in front of everyone. We, could, we don't have time. Only fans. We don't have time. All right, we don't have time, but Options still. Options dealing Fucking with tall hell. opponents, six foot six plus. That's a big cunt who is keeping heavy top pressure on our de reverse de la Hiva hook. 
but with tall posture and second leg back, no options to attack arms or far leg. You got invert through the legs there, my friend. If you can't get an underhook grip on the near, on the lead leg, that we're talking like knee cut position, yeah? yeah? If you can't get an underhook on the lead leg, grab the sole of the foot. I recommend watching Kieran Kitchuk's Inside Guard Secrets RDLR video on that. Uh, you can also watch my half butterfly one, but there's not there's not too much on that. But that's the that's the tip. That is just the tip. Grab the sole of the foot, use that to invert because you can't reach deep enough to get the under. It. That Fuck. is just the tip. All this knowledge bomb. Couple Fuck, more questions. Man, it's Fa coming thick and fast. Favorite finishing that's sequence tight. from Saddle Double Trouble. I still have I still have high success with one of your UK variant instructionals, where you heist to belly up, and belly down. I don't know yeah. why set up and separate legs, etc. That's still good. I would now use that. Try to go from saddle to double 50. Watch Lachlan Giles. That is the long and short of it. Uh, to just go through the technical details might be a waste of your time here. So better to go on Lachlan Giles. Check out the sub meta. Uh, or maybe he's even got some bits on his Instagram. If you can decipher it from the sparring, then that's probably the best way for you to learn it and like see all the common reactions and what Lachlan does and the timing he uses to counter it. Worst handshake I've ever seen immediately threw up after seeing that. What the fuck? Your posture says you... What the bloody hell's going on out there? They must be after Christian. Terror police. Your posture says you both do BJJ. Mate, we have to wrap it up. We love jiu-jitsu. There. We have to go. 5-2. Mate, I've got, I told you. I can't come fuck! Fucking traffic. Fuck off. Great to see you, man. Burn my hand. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. I just burned my hand. There's yeah, hot there. wax all over yeah, it. Yeah, guys, Thanks, remember, mate. like, subscribe. If you want to grow your business, check out No, no Faf Marketing. Faf you marketing. Just do that. Honestly, go check her out. We'll link uh, there. Put the link in bio. We'll have some kind of like link annotations, I think they're called. You're going to be seeing something coming up. Get on it. We'll do the dance and song next week, and we'll probably get a couple strippers in for that. So don't miss it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no yeah. Faf Marketing will be funding all of that. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Great, yeah. Great, great, yeah, great, 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 great. Um, great. Check out DVDs, strength programmings. Guys, I've got a four-week strength program that you can check out. One-off purchase if you want to get strong. Anyway, okay. Good to see you, man. Thanks for your handshake. See you, guys.